Hall, and this is a really good time to be doing this interview because yesterday I got from my publisher Putnam the page proofs for the uh, Teddy Faye thriller that I wrote with Stuart Woods. I do a series of those. And that is a bit of a milestone because when that comes out, that will be my 50th published book. I have so many backgrounds as an author. I come from a, a series of failed jobs. My first book was written somewhat by accident. What happened was I was called for jury duty. And the, it was so boring being there that the second day I brought a notebook and started scribbling in it. I had several sources of inspiration. Uh, the earliest was Perry Mason. My parents were both English lit teachers. And after a hard day of teaching the classics, they would come home, they would kick their feet up and whip out the latest Perry Mason paperback and read it. And I was a 10 year old kid and I found this absolutely fascinating. So I picked one up and read it and it was wonderful. So I immediately started saving all of my money and going up and buying Perry Mason paperbacks. When Gardner died, which was in 1970, uh, I uh, immediately started writing a Perry Mason murder mystery. And uh, I applied to uh, Earl Stanley Gardner's widow for permission to use the character. And she wrote back and said, you creepy kid, what makes you think you could do that? That was the first impetus was, I want to be Earl Stanley Gardner. I want to write like Earl Stanley Gardner. I want to write Perry Mason. Now, what happened later when, that, when I wasn't allowed to do that, before I wrote my first book, in the 80s, something else happened. I happened to read uh, Looking for Rachel Wallace by Robert B. Parker, a Spencer novel. And it was fantastic. It's a very simple book. He bodyguards a radical feminist. They bicker, she fires him, she's kidnapped, and he spends the rest of the book looking for her. Sounds dull. It was terrific. And I thought, wow, what a great way to write Private Eye. In terms of giving up, quitting, I've never tried, I've never wanted to quit, but I've been quitted against. In other words, I have had publishers drop me right and left. I have found myself in a position where I don't have a job because no one will hire me. I write books that are well reviewed, but no one reads. And after a while, the publisher finds out. The publisher says, oh my God, we're paying this guy a lot of money and nobody's buying his books. Why are we doing that? And then they stop doing it. And then I have to reinvent myself and try again. Developing new plot lines is never easy. I found that out early on. When I started my Stanley Hastings series, he was a guy do, working for a negligence lawyer like, like I did. And fourth book into the series, he calls on one of his clients and they're all the same. They broke their leg, they slipped on a crack in the sidewalk. So the office girls call him, say, here we've got a case, go see so-and-so uh, and sign him up. He tripped on a crack in the sidewalk. Stanley goes there and finds the client dead. So he calls the police and they come and now they're interrogating him. I mean, it is very difficult to dredge plots up and I always face the blank page starting a new book uh, with writer's block. I always have writer's block. I have no idea where I'm going. But I say, this is my job? All right, let's start writing and see what happens. Authors have different ways of researching novels. 
and they'll all tell you something different. I'll tell you what I do. I don't. I write what I know as opposed to what I can learn. I develop plot lines uh, from anything handy. And uh, for the Stanley Hastings books, um, it usually started with the title. A, a funny thing for me, after a lifetime of writing books that no one read, suddenly I'm writing the Stuart Woods books and everybody reads them. It says, Stuart Woods and Parnell Hall. And people buy them because his name is Donna. So people buy them because they don't know I wrote them. And that's terrific because it's so nice to have people buy and actually read something you wrote. And on the New York Times bestseller list, our names are exactly the same size.